Good morning and welcome to the Friendship Missionary Baptist Church, where our pastor is Reverend Carlton L. Phillips. We want to thank you for worshiping with us this Sunday morning, whether you are here in the sanctuary or you're joining us virtually. We want to say happy birthday to those celebrating a birthday today, as well as for the upcoming week. May you be blessed with many more. Happy anniversary to those that are celebrating the anniversary this coming week. May you be blessed with many more anniversaries. Please continue to keep those that are on our sick and shut in list on your prayer list. We want to thank you for coming. We pray that you won't leave like you came in Jesus' name. Now let the service begin. Good morning, everybody. We're going to go ahead and get our devotion started this morning. If you will, will you please get a hymn book? We're going to start out with uh, hymn page 429, when we all get to heaven. Good to see everybody come out this morning. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace in the mansion bright and bliss. He prepared for us when we all get to heaven. What a day! that will be when we all see Jesus we'll sing and shout to victory while we walk the pilgrim pathway clouds will over spread the sky but when traveling Days are over, not a shadow, not a sign. When we are and we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout to victory. Word to the prize before us, soon his beauty will be whole. Soon the pearly gates of love, we shall tread the streets of gold when we all see to heaven. We'll shall that will be when we all see Jesus we'll sing and shout the victory next year Word. 
shall set me free. And they go home, my crown to wear, for there's a crown for me. And sing, go home, my crown to Amen, friendship. I tell you, it's just great this morning. Just a short little clip that we're going to get into it. You know, uh, everything happens for a reason. We just thank the Lord for it. We looked out this morning. I was talking to one of our members, a new one, uh, Reverend Lynch back here. Just stick your hand in the area. We'll go from there. But uh, we thank you for coming out. Thank all our uh, uh, members that came out this morning and guests and all. So we thank you for that. This morning, it leads into the uh, scripture. The scripture is going uh, to come out of Hebrews this morning. Come out of um, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 through 39. And before we dip into that, I want to give you a second to get to Hebrews 10, verses uh, 24 through 39. The title of it is Encourage Each Other. You know, a lot of things go on in the world, but we can always use a little encouragement, if nothing else. We need that. So let's go ahead and get to uh, Hebrews 10, verses 24 through 39. Give you a second to get there. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more, as you see the day approaching. For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. But certain fearful looking of a judgment and fiery, fiery, fiery indignation which we shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy on the two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall be thought worthy who had trodden under the foot of the Son of God and had counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and had done despite unto the Spirit of grace. For we know him that had said, Vengeance belonging to me, I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But call the remembrance of the former days in which, after you illuminated, you endured a great fight of affliction. Partly was ye had made a gazing stock, both of reproaches and affliction, and partly was because of companions of them that were so used. For you had compassion for me and my bonds, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have heaven a better and enduring substance. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which had great recompense of reward. For you have, you have need of patience, and after ye have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he shall come, and will come, and will not tarry. Now that the just have lived by faith, and any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. May the Lord add a blessing to the reason and doers of his word. Amen. Come on in, then we'll bring him on in, then we'll go ahead and have one more prayer. Thank you. You know, we can often, uh, like on the freeway, we can step on that gas pedal and roll, but sometimes it don't hurt to slow it down and give everybody a chance to get up on there. We all put gas in the car, let us ride. Amen.
Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for being God all by yourself, Lord, just keeping everything in balance and in order. Lord, getting us up this morning with a reasonable amount of health and strength, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, for keeping everything in balance. And, Lord, as we gather today, whether there's two or three are gathered, Lord, we know you're in the midst of it. Lord, we're asking for a prayer this morning, Lord, for all the survivors and all that have been around Florida, North Carolina, and all that have gone through the storm. Lord, it could have been us and it could have been many, but you saw for it fit to keep things in order. And for that, we thank you, Lord. Lord, we're praying for the Duncan family, Lord, and the Mays and several of them that may be going through bereavement this week, Lord. Continue to give those families comfort, Lord. Be with them, Lord. Continue to keep your hollow hand around them, Lord, and just keep everything in order. And this week, Lord, as we look out with our sick and shut in and all those that are going through ailments this week, Lord, be with them. Be with their caregivers. Be with their doctors. Be with all, Lord, and help them to see the way and things that be according to your, your will, Lord. And, Lord, this morning as we look out amongst our leaders, and ones that have responsibilities, Lord. Help them get away from selfish gain and any of their foolishness and be about your people, Lord, because that's what's important. And not only is it important, Lord, help them understand their consequences for not doing as they should too, Lord. So help them to understand that as they move forward. And Lord, as we get ready for this uh, service today, Lord, just reach down, Lord, and just remind us, Lord, how good you've been to all of us this morning, Lord. As we look around, Look at us who showed up this morning, Lord. I don't think anyone in the congregation is hungry this morning, Lord. We laid down last night and got up this morning, Lord, for that. We're just grateful, Lord. If we had 10,000 tons, we just couldn't thank you enough, Lord, because you've been good and you continue to be good to us, Lord. If we don't understand, shame on us, Lord. But we just thank you. And for that and the many blessings you bestowed upon us, Lord, we just say thank you for all you've done and continue to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you. Good morning, saints. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We want to give God all the praise. For he's worthy. For he's blessed us to see another day. And a lot of times when we fellowship with God, it, it should be not because we're in need or we're in distress, but it should be just to be in his presence. I'm so thankful that I can come before God and I can say, Lord, I thank you 
for being so good to me. And I don't know how you feel this morning, but I'm mighty glad that he blessed me to see another day. And I can come to him and say, Lord, there's nothing I need. I'm not calling on you because I want something. But I'm calling on you because I just want to be in your presence. That's enough to shout about right there. So I want you to let go and let God this morning. Because God is in the place. And it's just a blessing to be in his presence. Amen? Amen. 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 We're going to turn you over to our some music now. And our wonderful choir with our hymn. The hymn for this morning will be Christ the Solid Rock. As Christ the Solid Rock, we stand. Sing that and be Everybody also ready stand. for the responsive reading. book Matthew 7 1 through 5 judge not that ye be not judged and why behold thy the boat that is in thy brother eye but consider not that the beam that is in thy own eye. All thy hypocrite first cast out the beam that I Amen. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, we come today honor you through us, for we do anything. Because of you, we can't do nothing, but with you, we can do all things. You are fair, honest, you are a good God. We not worry about anything because you say in your word, if you be for us, who can be against us? Even in the evil and last days, we know that you are with us. You Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. 
And then, Lord, as we pray today, we pray, Lord, for that we lost a soldier here. We pray for the Duncan family that one of them soldiers is gone to be with you. We give you all praise. Give you all glory. Then, Lord, we pray for the pastor, the preachers, the deacons, the musicians, the congregation. We pray that you do, Lord. We ask you to do what you do best. Is that you take care of us, you forgive us, you love us, you do all things that is good, and we just want to be like you. Lord, continue to be with us. As we pray, we pray for the young, the middle-aged, and the elders. You got us up this morning, and if it be your will, we, we will rest this this even we thank you we magnify you we pray lord that you just continue to do what you do thank you lord for sending your son jesus that died and rose with all power in his hand and he died for all of our sin the greatest story ever been told. We thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, the one that I said, love us because God sent him. The one that made it where we can get to heaven. The one that came that we can forgive because of him. Thank you, Jesus, for being so good. In Jesus' name, in the mighty name, Jesus. And everybody shout. Amen. And to God, be the glory. Good morning, friendship. Uh, we have a few announcements, so please bear with me. Um, but before I get into that, uh, we have a spare, special, excuse me, prayer request for Brother Stanley Street, amen. He'll be having surgery on this Thursday. We are praying for a complete and total healing, amen. We pray that God uh, guides the hands, the minds, and the hearts of all of those who are involved, amen. Amen. Uh, the pastor is requesting um, the mass choir, which includes all choirs, youth, women, and men, to practice every Tuesday and Wednesday at 6 o'clock p.m. Uh, during this month. Uh, we've been doing that. Uh, for those of you who, who have not been, uh, please, sir, please, ma'am, come on out and uh, help us uh, praise the Lord. Amen. This is uh, leading up to our church anniversary. Amen. Okay, uh, this is from Alone. Uh, ladies, take a break. Come out and enjoy the ladies of the church for a Friday night movie outing to be held on Friday, October 25th, 2024 at 5 o'clock p.m. here at the church. Uh, it is a movie night um, with, the, with the king. The movie for the night is a night with the king. Refreshments will be served. Um, church directories are ready for pickup. See Sister Flo Hill at the back of the church. 23, excuse me, 23 days left to cast your vote on November 5th. For those needing to check if they are registered and or to make sure their polling location is correct, a few members will be in the fellowship hall immediately after church today and next Sunday. October 21st is the last day you can register or make changes for your information to vote in the up and coming election. Amen. Uh, from the youth department, we're asking everyone that has signed up for the fall festival and trunk or treat to please come out uh, on this Thursday, 10-17, 2024 at 5 o'clock p.m. for a brief meeting. All sign-ups are still available uh, at both entrances, so we're asking that you uh, please uh, come out and help us uh, make a safe and fun environment for our youth uh, during this, this, this season. Amen. Um, and I know a lot of you are donating candy, and we truly appreciate that. But I, I, I want to echo the sentiment, we also need your time. Amen. 
uh, in order for it to, to be a fun and festive event. We need the adults of friendship to come out uh, in, in full force and help us, uh, be it in the concessions and or in the trunk or treat or running games, amen. So if you have the opportunity, please sir, please ma'am, come on out and help us, amen. We will also be having a, uh, well, excuse me, Medicare open enrollment is October 15th through December 17th. We'll have an open enrollment event here at Friendship Missionary Baptist Church, October 29th, uh, 2024, from 10 o'clock a.m. to 2 o'clock p.m. Uh, if you need any information, you're more than welcome uh, to uh, look for us in the church secretary's office. We have flyers for you there, amen. Please also, excuse me, uh, FMBC Pearls will be meeting at 5 o'clock p.m. every Thursday of each month. That is this Thursday, amen. Uh, so for those who uh, fit the criteria for the FMBC Pearls, please, uh, ladies, come on out uh, and fellowship with them, amen. We're also leading up to our 134th church anniversary, which will be October 27th at 10 o'clock a.m., amen. Breast Cancer Awareness um, month is this month. We will celebrate it the third Sunday, October 20th, asking all ladies to wear pink or chucks and pearls. Men, please wear pink ties. Amen. We ask that you also remember our known sick and shut in. Happy birthday to those who are celebrating an, a birthday this week. And happy anniversary to Mr. and Mrs. Barry and Lisa Fluker. Amen. 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 And our thought for the week, if you can't say anything nice, say a prayer. Amen? Amen. And we have one more announcement um, after Deacon Woods. Uh, we've got also Sister, uh, rather, Minister Grant. Amen? Good morning. We are just two weeks away from celebrating our 134th church anniversary. The only thing we're asking, even though Deacon Woods has another uh, appeal, is that you join us. It's so important that we have our members join us as we have a great speaker who's coming from Selma, Alabama, who's going to bless us with God's word. We also are asking that you uh, pay attention to our fall colors. That is what we will be wearing. But if you don't have anything that fits in that category, we're just asking that you be present. We're also uh, wanting you to be mindful of our theme, and that is taken from uh, Matthew, and on this rock, where Peter says, on this rock I shall build my church. So we've got a lot of things going on, guys. We've got some great members, amazing members who are going to be on our program, so we're just asking you to be a part of it. And now, Deacon Woods, if you will tell them what we really need. <laughs> what, we, what we always ask for. Your financial blessing, please. Uh, we're celebrating our 134th anniversary, $134 a member, $134 for each auxiliary. Uh, I know it, Brother McLess and I were in the choir the other, other night, and, and, and we were trying to see how many things we had to go to put into. But it, it, it didn't hurt, okay? So let's be, let's do what we're supposed to do. Let's be obedient, $134. $134, our 134th anniversary, from each member and from each auxiliary. Good morning, friendship. I try not to get up here often, and in particular, after what we know, this is such a busy month for us. But I don't know if you all knew it or not, but it almost caught me by surprise. But the entire month of October is designated as Pastor's Appreciation Month. Now, we only have a couple of more weeks left in this month, and we already heard church anniversary is coming. But we cannot allow Pastor's Appreciation Month to go by without appreciating our pastor. Amen. So here's what it is that we want to do. So on next Sunday, we want to shower him with some love, some words of encouragement, we want to, first of all, thank God for the calling that God has put on his life. And then secondly, we want to thank him just for the labor of love because 
Church, you know, we come every Sunday, and he prepares a table before us every Sunday with the word of God. And I don't know about you, but I don't go many places and eat. Don't leave a tip, but don't thank somebody for the good food that I've eaten. So I'm hoping we can come together next Sunday. Here's what we also want to do. We want to do a little video um, tape for him. So if you've got words of encouragement, even if it's simply to say, Pastor, we thank you. Pastor, we love you. Pastor, we appreciate you. If you would see Flo Hill today or even me, or even if you would just do a quick recording at home and send it by next Thursday, we want to put together a little video tape for him to show him that he does have a church that loves him. We are planning to put something in the paper next Sunday too, on the weekend paper, so he will know that his church family love him. So the last thing I would tell you is that, you know, when you eat a good meal, you always like a little dessert at the end. So friendship, I'm just telling you, whatever you can do, if you can bring him a little love token next Sunday, I'm sure he will be happy for whatever he gets. You know, if you listen at all to um, Thursday morning prayer, at the end of that prayer, he always says, I love you. And then he asks us to tell him he loves us back. Next Sunday is our opportunity to say, Pastor, we love you. So I hope just do whatever you can and we'll be appreciative. Thank you. My apologies. We have a, um, a correction to one of my earlier announcements. If you took pictures, amen, um, there is a free directory that came with the pictures that you took. So if you took pictures, then you have a directory in the back. Please go see Sister Flo Hill uh, for that. Amen? Amen. Now, how many of you are ready to praise the Lord in this place? How many of you are truly ready to praise the Lord in this place? Uh, you can do better than that. You're not praising me. You're praising the one that woke you up this morning. How many of you are ready to praise the Lord in this place? Uh, come on, you can give God your best. You're dressed your best. Give God your best praise in this place. He woke you up this morning and started you on your way. Give him a praise. When the doctor said no, he said yes. Give him a praise. When your children were out on the streets and you were worried about them, he still brought them. Give him a praise. Uh, come on, give God your best in this place. Give God your best because you woke up this morning. Give God your best because he started you on your way. If you can't give him your best for anything else, give him your best just because of who he is. He's Mary's baby. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the bright and morning star. All right. song I'm going to attempt to try to sing this morning. This is for all of those that have lost loved ones. Like my grandmama used to tell me, that's going to be a great meeting in the sky. And I don't know about you, but I want to be at that meeting. I want to be at the meeting I want to be at the meeting I want to be at the meeting When all saints get home After the separated Of the right and the wrong church I want to be at the meeting around the throne, my Jesus. I want to be at the meeting, talk about a good time. Talk about joy. I'm speaking for joy. Oh, yeah. When all the saints get home. After the separated of the right and the wrong church, I want to be at the meeting 
around the throne, my Jesus. After the separating of the right and the wrong, I want to be in the number when the saints go marching on. Trouble will be over, sorrow will be gone, saints, then we can go to the meeting around the throne. Where I want to be at the meeting, I want to be at the meeting, yes I do. I want to be at the meeting when all saints get on. After the separation of the right and the wrong church, I want to be at the meeting around the throne. See if y'all can identify this verse. When I get to Jordan, walk Jordan just like a man. I'll unbuckle my sword from right off my side. I'll stick it in the golden sand. Talk to God the Father. I'll talk to God the Son. Saints. Then we can go to the meeting around the throne. I want to be at the meeting. Talk about a good time. I want to be at the meeting. Talk about joy. I'm speaking for joy. Oh, yeah. When all the saints get home. After the separating of the right and the wrong church, I want to be at the meeting around the throne. I like this verse right here. When I get to heaven, I'll meet my dear mother there. She'll say, God to mighty, here come my child. He must have got here by prayer. We be at home, Lord, we'll sing a brand new song, saints. And then we can go to the meeting around the throne. I want to be at the meeting. Talk about a good time. I want to be at the meeting. Talk about joy. I want to be at the meeting. Oh, yeah. When all the saints get on church, after the separating of the right and the wrong church, I want to be at the meeting around the throne. Just one more time. I want to be at the meeting. Talk about a good time. I want to be at the meeting. Talk about joy. Unspeakable joy. Oh, yeah. When all the saints get home. After the separating of the right and the wrong church, I want to be at the meeting around the throne.
I got to clean up what I messed up. I'm starting my life over again. I got to clean up what I messed up. Starting my life over again. Help me, fellas, say I got to clean up. I got to clean up what I messed up. Yeah. Starting my life over again. Say it again, y'all. Clean up. What's the do, y'all? But I messed up. Yeah. I'm starting my life over again. Listen at this. I made up my mind. I ain't lying no more. Cause a lying a cheater can't make it through the door. I gotta clean up. When I messed up, yeah, I'm starting my life over again. Yeah, I gotta well, clean, clean up. up. Yes, I do, y'all. But I messed up, yeah, I'm starting my life over again. Listen at this. I made up my mind. I ain't running no more. I'm going back to church. Gonna walk right through the door. I gotta clean, clean up. Yeah, but I messed up. Yeah, Lord. Started my life over again. Yeah, I gotta clean, clean up. up. Yes, I do, y'all. But I messed up. Ooh, we started my life over again. Listen to this. I made up my mind. I ain't cheating no more. Cause a lie and a cheater can't make it through the door. I gotta clean, clean up when I messed up. Yeah, started my life over again. Yeah, I gotta clean up when I messed up. Started my life over again. Now listen to this, those of you. Those of you. Let's feel like I do. Let's do better. Said again, those. Those of you that feel like I do. Let's do better. Yeah, I gotta clean up what I messed up. Yeah, Lord. Started my life over again. Well, I messed up. Started my life over again. Let's do that. Those of you, those of you, those of you that feel like I do, let's do better. Say it again, those, those of you that feel like I do, let's do better. Yeah. But I messed up. I'm starting my life over again. Yeah, gotta clean up. But I messed up. Yeah, Lord. I'm starting my life over again. One more time, y'all. I gotta, I gotta clean up. But I messed up. Yeah, starting my life over again. church amen let's amen again come on give our male course another rousing God bless you amen.
church family, we, it is no secret this week we have lost, amen, a dear member, Sister Mary Duncan. Please, ma'am, please, sir, pray for that family. If you can't do anything else, you can't take pain away. You cannot console grief all at one time. But one thing we can do is pray for one another. Amen. The funeral plans are tentatively being made, and we will make you aware of those as they are forthcoming. And let us come out, amen, and thank God for her life, thank God for her witness and her testimony. My last interaction with her, I went to see her in the hospital. I told her, I said, I want, I want you to eat this entire plate. I'm going to be mad. She said, well, you ain't said nothing but a word. She said, it's actually pretty good today. So I thank God for her spirit always making you laugh and smile and a joy to be around her. Amen. I like, it, it is quite hurtful when one of our soldiers goes home, but we thank God for, amen, what the Lord has done. Pray with me, if you would. Eternal God, we thank you, Lord. We praise you. We give you glory, and we give you honor. Lord, here we are now standing on the threshold of your word, standing on the threshold of promise. Our prayer is that you would move in our midst. Do what only you can. Speak to us. It's our sincerest prayer, oh God, that please, Lord, don't let us leave here the same way that we came. Hide us now at this moment behind the shadow of Calvary's cross that your people may see all of you but then see none of us. When it's all said and done, we give you the glory, we give you the honor, and we give you the praise. Let every heart say, Amen. Amen. Don't cover her mouth. At least I know I got one amen. Amen. <laughs> Matthew chapter number seven. <laughs> Matthew chapter number seven. If you would stand in reverence to the reading of God's word. Matthew chapter number 7, when you have it, Matthew chapter number 7, verse number 7, would you say with me, amen, it says ask, and it will be given, seek, and you will find, knock, and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be open. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be open. I want to talk from a simple subject this morning. Simple, keep on praying. Keep on praying. My brothers and sisters, when we study the life, the testimony, the ministry of Jesus Christ, one of the things that we'll discover as we trace the tapestry of his life is that studying him, there are several things that Jesus repeatedly taught while uh, during his time on earth. There were certain things that he spoke, that he taught, that he emphasized not only once, but over and over again. He would often speak about the kingdom of heaven. He spent a lot of time speaking about the kingdom of God. It was the centralized message of Jesus Christ and his earthly ministry. And because the kingdom of heaven was his ministry and the centralized message, he talked about the kingdom of heaven more than any other subject. His desire was that for you and I, for those of us who follow him, he wanted his disciples to be kingdom conscious and for us to always have, be kingdom minded and have kingdom conversations. He wanted the word that came out of our mouths to be rooted in kingdom. He wanted us to walk and talk with a kingdom mindset. He wanted us to be disciples and to conduct ourselves like we were citizens in the kingdom of God. Not only did Jesus speak about the kingdom of God, but the second thing he talked about was also money and wealth. Some think it's unusual, but a tremendous amount of his time was spent talking 
about money. Jesus didn't want his followers to have a misconception about the matter, so he talked about Wood's wealth and money to warn them of the trappings of things that money could buy. He didn't teach against money. He didn't teach about having it, but he taught against the love of money. He taught about the pursuance of temporal things above those things that are spiritual. That's why he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. He never forbid those of us who love him from gaining wealth. But he didn't want us while gaining wealth to be consumed by the wealth we were trying to gain. Well, the last thing that he talked about uh, was not just the kingdom of God, not, was not just money, but the last thing Jesus spent most of his time speaking about was the spiritual discipline of prayer. The spiritual discipline of prayer, Reverend Lyles, was so important to him that he even went so far as to make and award a model prayer. Jesus' philosophy, Reverend Hill, was simply this. I want you to duplicate this prayer. So in order for you to duplicate it in your life and in your mind and in your spirit, I've got to demonstrate it for you. And here again, we see Jesus talking. And in the text, he's teaching the disciples how to pray. But this is the third time in two chapters that Jesus has taken the time to speak specifically about the discipline of prayer. The first time he talks about prayer was in Matthew chapter number 6, and verses 5 and 6. He emphasized in those passages the need for private prayer. He instructs the disciples not to be like the hypocrites. He says, when you pray, go into your private closet and close the door because the God that sees you in private is also the God that will reward you in public. Y'all aren't going to help me, aren't you? That's the first time. He talks about the privacy of our prayers. But then the second time we see him talking about prayer, he teaches about the productivity of our prayers. That's in Matthew chapter number 6, verse number 9. It's there when he gave the disciples the model prayer. He said, when you pray, pray like this. He, he, he never warned the disciples, Deacon McLean, to uh, quote, the, quote the prayer verbatim. But he wanted them to take a piece of the prayer to walk with their daily lives. He wanted them to incorporate the elements of his prayer and put it into their own prayer lives. He says, if you take the time to read, uh, if you take the time to follow this, then your prayer life will be productive. Well, for those who are familiar with that model prayer, you know that there are some divine takeaways uh, within the model prayer that we ought to retain. In the model prayer, Jesus shows us that you ought to have some pertinence and paternity in your prayer. In other words, you ought to acknowledge that God is our Father and that our Father is in heaven. Yeah. And not only that, Reverend Hill, he says you ought to have some priority in your prayer. In other words, you should pray for his kingdom and for his will on earth to be done. But then you ought to have some petition in your prayer. He says, ask the Lord to give you a daily, a daily portion of your daily bread. But not only should there be some paternity, priority, and petition in your prayer, but also there should be some pardoning in your prayer. He says, in other words, you should always ask the Lord to forgive you. And just as the Lord forgives you, you ought to forgive other folks. You got to have paternity. You got to have priority, petition, and pardon. But then he says, you ought to always pray for God's protection every day. You ought to ask the Lord to keep you from evil and to keep evil from you. But here, in Matthew chapter number 7, this is the third time that we see Jesus talking about prayer. Before now, he's tried to teach the disciples about the productivity of prayer and the privacy of prayer. But here, in chapter number 7, it goes a step further because he doesn't just talk about productivity and privacy, but he talks about the persistence that we ought to have in our prayer. He says... We know that he, he says that when we pray, we ought to be persistent in our goings and our comings. We ought to be persistent when we go to God. We know that it's important. We know that uh, it should be persistent because of the verbs that he uses in this particular passage. He uses the verbs ask, seek, knock. These words represent a continuous action. Uh, Brother Wilson, a continuous meaning. He says, well, if it doesn't happen for you the first time that you ask, keep on asking. If, it doesn't have, if you don't find it, the first time you look, keep on looking. Thank you, Wood. If the door doesn't open the first time that you knock, keep on knocking. Because you need to know that when you're persistent in your prayers, if you keep seeking, if you keep knocking, if you keep asking, sooner or later what you need is going to come. Because one thing I know, I've never prayed 
I, I've never sought after the Lord. I've never knocked on the door that eventually did not open. The message that the Lord is trying to teach us here in Matthew chapter number 7 is that if you have a healthy prayer life, you can go to him. And not only can you go to him, but you can go to him for whatever. And not only can you go to him for whatever you need, he will give it to you. Well, here's the question. Here's the question. If you're going to have that healthy prayer life, if he's going to answer you when you call, what is it then that you ought to know? I'm so glad you asked. Uh, in order to have a healthy prayer life, there are a few things that you and I must remember. First of all, uh, we have to remember that prayer isn't a privilege extended to us. Prayer is a privilege extended to us. He says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. Jesus is saying here that the blessing of the benefit, the blessing of prayer is that you don't need anybody to do it for you. Okay, y'all. The blessing of prayer is that you don't have to wait for someone to give it to you. The blessing, the benefit of prayer is that not only can you go to God, but you can go to him all by yourself. You can ask for yourself. You can seek for yourself. You can knock for yourself. You don't need someone to ask for you. You don't need to wait at somebody be at somebody else's disposal. You don't have to wait for someone else to answer the door. You can go to God all by yourself. You don't have to sit in a room and speak everything about your life to someone else and wait for them to go to God on your behalf. The blessing of being with God and God of being with you is that you can go to him anytime you call. Oh, what a privilege it is to talk to the Lord for ourselves. See, most of us, the reason why we're not excited about that is because we have become uh, immune to the benefit of being able to go to God ourselves. Y'all didn't hear me. I'll say it again. The reason why most of us uh, are immune, uh, most of us don't get excited about this particular portion of prayer is that we've become immune to the fact that we can go to God for ourselves. Y'all still didn't hear me. Let me say it again. Thank you. Let me say it one more time in the middle. The reason why... It probably doesn't excite us this morning about this particular part of our prayer lives is because we've become immune to the fact that God lets us come to him just for ourselves. Well, here's a shot. Here's a shot, Tommy. Here, here, here's a shot. When I think about how big God is, I have to look at how small I am. And when I think about how big he is and how small I am, it humbles me, Woods, to think about the fact that as simple as I am, as finite as I am, as flaky as I am, as dirty as I am, as messed up as I am, a holy God will still call. He will still come and hear me when I call. We still have the privilege that allows us to go to God for ourselves. Somebody ought to be happy about that this morning. We've been given a privilege, a privilege, a privilege of being able to stand at the feet of the Lord. Tell him all about our troubles. Yeah, what, what, what bothers me is that we become immune. Let me tell you why. Because now, we value so many things in life more than our ability to go to God. Yeah, we value the things that we can have and we can hold, the things that money can buy. We value the, our invitation, our status. We value our degrees. We value club seats at the game. We value special parking and VIP access. We get excited about things that do not matter. But the real shout of the day is that the Lord has given us the opportunity not just to come to him, but to come to him whenever we desire. Here it is. We have the greatest access to the greatest person. Imagine if President Biden gave you his personal phone number. Imagine if you could go through your phone and actually call Kamala Harris. Do you know how excited you would be? But there ought to be somebody here this morning that can thank God for the fact that I have access to somebody higher than the president. I've got access to somebody who's bigger than big, greater than great, greater than good. I've got access to somebody who sits high and looks low. I've got access to somebody who never sleeps nor slumbers. I've got access to somebody who can wipe my tears, who can rock me to sleep at night, who can be a comforter when I'm all by myself. There ought to be somebody here that can say, I thank God I can call him up. I've got access. And let me tell you, let, let me tell you, let me tell you why access shouts me. Access is better than money. 
access is something water can't drown. It's some fire can't steal. It's some thieves can't steal. It's some mouse can't destroy. When you've got access to him, when you know him, and he knows you, you can call him up. That's why the hymn writer put it this way. Uh, Brother Di, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. It's a privilege. Prayer is a privilege that's been extended to us. But it's also a priority that has been expected of us. Verse number seven says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. <coughs> Where's the strange thing about the text? Look at the verbs, the, verb, the usage of the verbs. Ask, seek, knock. These verbs are put in context, to put it in context, they are in what's called the imperative mood. That simply means uh, that it's a command that the giver of the command expects the hearer of the command to perform. When something is in the imperative mood, it expresses not a suggestion, but rather something that is a command. Jesus is not giving us the option. He's not giving us an invitation. He, he, he's not saying that you ought to ask that y'all seek, then maybe, just maybe, if you have nothing else to do, that y'all to knock. He's saying that, you, you, he's not saying that you ought to try knocking when you are bored. In other words, he's not making a suggestion. He's telling us to ask, seek, and knock. He's not giving us the option of whether we should do it or should not. He's giving us a command. And if it's a command that the Lord is giving to us, if we do not do it, then it becomes the sin of omission. Yeah, see, there's, there, there are two different sins. If I had more time this morning, I'd uh, talk about the two differences in sin. There is the sin of commission when we actually do something. Y'all looking at me strange. But then there's the sin of omission, that, of something that we are told to do that we leave undone. And so if Jesus tells us that we ought to ask, that we ought to seek, that we ought to knock, and we do not do it, it is the direct sin of omission. If he tells us what to do and we have not done it and we fail to do so, then we have left a command of the Lord undone. Prayerlessness. Make no mistake about it. Being a Christian and not praying, it is a sin. See y'all. <laughs> Make no mistake about it. Being a prayer, being a Christian and never going to God. It's not the way to live. Okay, Daddy used to put it this way. Daddy used to put it this way, Woods. He said, being a Christian without prayer is like having a car with no gas. You're not going to get very far. How can you say that you love the Lord and you have adopted his word as the model for your life and how can you be close, huh, huh, Sister Kirkland, to a God that you never talked to? The Lord expects us to speak to him sometimes. He expects us to talk to him sometimes. That's why Philippians chapter 41 verse 6 says, Do not be anxious, but in everything, in every situation, pray without ceasing. God desires us to go through our day with a mindset of prayer. Now let me clear something up for you. You can't. You, you, you're not going to be a person that walks around all day and every word that comes out of your mouth is going to be a prayer. But what God expects from us is that we have the mindset to every step that we take, every decision that we make, every day that we live, every time we go, we ought to be rooted and deeply rooted in prayer. That's why 1 Timothy chapter number 2 says, I exhort you to pray that should be made for those that are in authority. We've got to pray for those who are in authority. We've also have the mandate to pray for one another. But here's the hardest thing. Jesus also expects us to pray for our enemies. Yeah. <laughs> Matthew, it's, it's there in the Bible. Matthew chapter number five, verse number 34 says, love your enemies, bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them that despitefully use you. Well, I know y'all have, the volume button has just turned off. You, you cut me off. 
if we're going to have a healthy prayer life, we just can't pray for our friends. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news. We can't just pray for those who pray for us. We can't just pray for those who say that they love us. We have to pray for those who actively try to hurt us. We've got to pray for those who will walk across the street to keep from speaking to us. We've got to pray for those that we don't know, that we're not invested in, that have never given us anything. We've got to pray for one another. Well, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave. I'm finished. I'm finished. Well, if we're going to have a healthy prayer life, if we're going to keep on praying, we've got to recognize that prayer is a privilege that's been extended to us. It's a priority that's expected of us. But lastly, if we're going to have a healthy prayer life, we've got to recognize that prayer is a practice that expedites things for us. It expedites things for us. Prayer is the vehicle by which God decides to bless us. I'll say it again. Say it again. Prayer is the vehicle by which God decides to bless us. Say it one more time. Prayer is the vehicle by which God decides to bless us. If The reason I, I repeat it is because if you need a miracle, pray. If you need a turnaround, pray. If you need to be delivered, healed, set free, made whole, if you need things to be different, pray. There is no book that's going to do it. There is no person that's going to do it. The Bible says, to ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and ye shall find not, and the door shall be opened. Prayer is the way God decides to bless us. Make no mistake about it, our, our blessing comes through prayer. That's why the old saints you say, little prayer, little power. No prayer. I knew y'all would help me after a while. Much prayer, much power. Whatever you need from the Lord, learn how to talk to him. That's why the Bible says that we ought to come boldly before the throne of grace. That we can obtain mercy in our time of need. Well, I'm going to leave you. Thank you for giving me your undivided attention for these last 13, 14 minutes. I sure do appreciate it. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm, 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 I'm going to tell you something about myself. Well, we can all remember when COVID-19 first hit. It was a terrible. We, devastating to the world. It was a new way of having to live. We couldn't come to church. But I'll tell you, it wasn't all bad. Because I, I, I discovered something about myself during the time of COVID, Brother Mark, that, that, that now I know it's a way of life. Don't judge me, but uh, some of you can't judge me. The reason why is because you're just like me. I discovered during the time of COVID how much of a compulsive online shopper I can be. I knew somebody, somebody, somebody would help me. I don't really like going to stores. I don't really like putting stuff, trying stuff on. Lily, I don't really like looking at this and going here. I, I definitely don't like dressing rooms. I love, during the time of COVID, to be able to see it, click it, and wait for it to come. Y'all can't judge me because you do it too. There's nothing like seeing the FedEx man coming down the street. There's nothing like seeing that uh, truck pull up to your front door. Oh, I get so excited. I meet them before they even get in the yard. I'm already there, hey. I don't mind signing when they come. But the reason I know that it's a compulsion is because I joined something during COVID-19 that many of you are members of. I learned how to do all, most of my shopping on Amazon. See, so if you don't know about Amazon, you need to be delivered. It's a real blessing. It's a, it's, it's a real blessing. And let me tell you, that's what is a greater blessing, not just Amazon, but somebody said it, Amazon Prime. See, 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 see when you're, you, you, you just can't be a normal Christian. You've got to take a step further. Amazon is one thing. But when you've got membership to Amazon Prime, here's the blessing. You not only know that it's coming, you can actually choose. I knew somebody would help me. If you don't like the date they give you, Brother Carter, you can always move on to, no, 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 no. I don't want it on Tuesday. I want it on Monday. I'm a prime member. Yeah, it's then that I learned just how much of a compulsion it is because I've learned through my compulsion of being an online shopper just how impatient I am. 
See, something about Amazon Prime is that it made me so lazy, I don't like to wait anymore. I, I know that when it's coming, and furthermore, I know when it's going to arrive, how it's going to be there, all I got to do is sit and wait for it to come. Well, y'all just missed me. I'm going to take my seat now, but can I tell you, that's the benefit. The last time I ordered something online, it was then that the Lord spoke to me and said, when you get to Friendship, 1130 West 14th Street, on the corner of 14th and Brown, make sure you tell them that Amazon Prime, waiting on shipping, is just like praying. Because when you've got special access, when you know him and he knows you, when you spend time in his presence, when you've been with the Lord, you can ask what you want. And the blessing is, you don't have to wait. All you got to do is learn how to be patient when he comes. That's why the songwriter said, that problem that I had, that I just couldn't seem to solve. I tried and I tried, but I wound up getting deeper involved. I turned it over to the Lord. And guess what happened? When I turned it over to him, he worked it out. Whatever it is that you need, the doors of church are open. Whatever it is that you've been waiting on, whatever it is that you've been praying for, don't you dare get tired now. Not only should you pray, but keep on praying. Don't dare, don't you dare give up or throw in the towel. God, just like you're waiting on the Lord, sooner or later, all you got to do is learn how to sit and wait for him to come. If there's one this morning that's out of the ark of safety, you don't know the Lord and the pardon of your sins, you can come. The Bible says that it's relatively simple. The benefits, the practice of a surrendered life is simply to come. Let God do the rearranging. Let God do the fixing. Let God do the maneuvering. If there's one this morning that's out of the ark of safety, you can come. Don't wait for another opportunity. You ought to come now while the blood is running warm in your veins. Jesus says that the benefit of trusting him is that all we got to do is learn how to talk to him and continue to talk to him. But maybe there's someone who, for you, that's point B, but you've totally bypassed point number A, point A. And point A is simply giving him your life to have and to hold. If you're here this morning, you, you won't, you won't, I, can't, I won't lie to you and tell you that tomorrow is automatically going to be better. That next week is going to be dramatically different than right now. But I will tell you this, when you're with the Lord and the Lord is with you, you'll see the benefits of trusting him in your daily walk. You'll see the benefits of a life that is surrendered. And if you're here this morning, I want to offer to you what someone once offered to me and what someone once offered to the person sitting next to you. That is that relationship that you can always depend on and have and hold. That is that relationship with a God that will never leave you nor forsake you. If you're here, you can come. If not, we leave you in the hands of a just and a righteous God. Amen. Our children are up in the fellowship hall. Some of them. Amen. I don't know if they can hear me. Amen. But our children are up in the fellowship hall. If we would. Amen. Prepare for them to come. Amen. Prepare for them to come. Amen. Won't it be grand? Won't it be grand? Won't it be grand? Won't it be grand? I'm going.
God for each and every one of you. We thank God for our youth and young adults. We thank God for them. Come on, give them a rousing God. Bless you. It's a blessing. It's a blessing when children actually want to come to church. And it's an even greater blessing that when they want to come to church, you actually have something for them. Amen. Amen. I said it before, I'll say it again, I'll keep on saying, we can't say we love the church and we don't prepare for a day that we're not around to see the church. You, 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 not, you ought to not want anything that you love to die when you die. You ought to want it to flourish and to keep going. And the only way to do that is to invest for tomorrow. People always say church, uh, children are the church of tomorrow. No, 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 they're not the church of tomorrow. They're the church of today. We can, we can easily talk about what they don't do, amen, but, hey, but that's another sermon for another time. The funeral for Sister Mary Duncan will be here at the Friendship Church Saturday at 2.30. Everybody say Saturday. Amen. Everybody say 2.30. Amen. We want to come out for those who can and will. Please, ma'am, please, sir, come out. Give your, amen, your well wishes. Pray for the family, and on that day, we will funeralize her and give a celebration of life. If there's nothing else, would you stand? Wherever you are, our benediction this morning will be given by Reverend Clyde Hill. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest ruling Bible for henceforth now and forever. Let us all say without singing, amen. Amen.